Glory. <laughs> this is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a what? A choice. Romans 6. Hallelujah. Romans 6. Wow. Everybody there? Hallelujah. Verse 1. Romans 60. We're going to start at 1E. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? <laughs> Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his what? It's called the baptism of death. You can all smile. The baptism of what? Death. <laughs> Verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with him through what? The baptism of death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So we're to walk in the newness of this new life, not in the flesh, not in the soul, in the spirit. Leading to the baptism of life. See, so we start off with the baptism of death. So we can lead into the baptism of life. One of the things the Spirit said to me is too many people are drifting away from me. They call me. They speak to me. But they're not speaking out of the Spirit. They're speaking out of the soul. He says, I've seen too many people drift from the spirit into the soul and then into the flesh. And are not discerning where they're speaking from. Let's go a little further. Verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was what? Crucified with him, knowing this. That the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, which is the presence of evil. Amen. For he who has died has, di has been what? Free from sin. So there's a place where you and I must maintain a level of death to be free. That's what the baptism of death is all about. Now, we started off in the baptism of death by repentance. There's, so there's got to be an area of repentance. And in this repentance, that's even repentance of living out of the flesh. Living out of the soul. And not living out of the spirit. See, there are people who still think they're living out of the spirit, but they're living out of the soul. And don't even know it. So they're doing things. You know, the word says, uh, unless, the Lord, uh, unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Anything that's built out of anything but the spirit is called vain. So we are entering a time right now. One of the things the Holy Spirit shared with me, he said, we are in an emotional war right now. He says, my people are being taken out and drifting from the spirit into the emotional war. They're not overcoming. They're still living by how they feel instead of what is truth. Everyone say, truth has no emotion. Truth has no emotion. That's why it can judge. It can free. It can bring life. And it can also kill. 
that has no emotion. Truth is truth, and that's that. Everybody okay? Ooh, shut up. Glory. Verse 7. Let's say this again. For he who has died has been free from what? Sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves, what? To be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its what? Lust. Lust is an emotion. Do not present your members as an instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under what? You are under grace. Now, the baptism of death is how we start and what we maintain. We maintain the baptism of death by repentance. But the whole thing is, is discerning whether you're living out of the spirit, out of the soul, or out of the flesh. So the baptism, then the baptism of death leads to the baptism of life, power, and the character of Christ. It leads to the baptism of what? Life, power, and the character of Christ, which is in the Holy Spirit. So we are to be dead to self. It is to deny selfish ambitions, emotions, desires, plans, so forth. Hallelujah. When we see the word might, it means that we're, there's a required cooperation of obedience to grace. <laughs> Amen? It is a required cooperation to the obedience of grace, which is God's plan. The plan of a, it's a plan of what? Escape. It's a plan of escape from deception, and it's a plan of escape from what? God's wrath. Some people don't understand that even God's wrath is God's love. God's judgment is God's love. Remember, his truth has no emotion. Truth is truth. It judges. It exposes. It heals. It delivers. It brings life. It has no emotion. It has a function. Hallelujah. The plan of escape is the grace of God. When we live in a process, we go from death to life, death to life, and everything we do. <clears throat> it is foundational requirement to be understood that everything must die to receive what? Life. No longer under agenda of darkness, but under agenda of life called God's grace or God's plan. So there must be a maintaining of a level of death to maintain the position in the spirit, not to drift into the soul or drift into the flesh again. Is everybody okay? Philippians 2. Baptism of death. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it there. If 
Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of what? One mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what? No reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in an appearance as a man, he what? Humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? Death. So you think we need to humble ourselves and come to a place of death every day? A lot of people think they're dead, but they're more alive than they realize. Because if you're not living out of the Spirit, you ain't dead. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. So he's saying maintain the same mind, same love. Maintain the level of death to avoid drifting in the emotional control of the soul desiring and the desires of the flesh. Fear and trembling, working out your, oh, the plan of God. Your salvation is the plan of God. Amen? You're working out your salvation. Why? Because God's given you the plan. Working it out, that means there's a place of cooperation. He says, but do it in fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. Why? Again, what is God's plan? To escape what? The deception of evil and the wrath of God. In Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. You know, you can always check your level of death. Ask yourself, what do you want? If there's a want, you ain't dead yet. It's that simple. Does everybody understand that? If you have a want, you're not dead yet. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Want. Why? Because you know he's going to provide no matter what. The only reason why we ask is because we're required to. So that requirement is fulfilling his word. Amen? But people freak out because they don't get what they ask for. Why don't they get what they ask for? God has a reason. Amen? Most of the time it's to uh, puff the soul or the flesh. You know, he knows what we need. Amen. The word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. 
Ask for wisdom. Ask for understanding. Ask for discernment. We're to ask for these things. Why? So we can cooperate with him. In Matthew 10, 27. What does he say? Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body. Where? In hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. <laughs> therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever den denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? Sword. Wow. Fear the one who's able to what? Kill you. I mean, it's that simple. Fear the one who's able to kill you. Now, you've got to understand something. There is a spiritual law. Whatever a man sows, he what? Reaps. So we actually bring it on ourselves. Remember, truth is no respecter of person. Amen? Truth is not emotional. Truth goes forth, and that's it. It does not return void. It does what it's supposed to do. It does what it says it will do. It will judge. It will bring life. It will bring prosperity. It will turn a curse to a blessing or a blessing to a curse. It will kill. It will love. It will forgive. But it has no emotion. It just does what it's supposed to do. Does everybody get this? This is truth. You got to stop playing with truth like an emotion. It's motionless. It does what it has to do. Does everybody get it? Acts chapter 1. Hallelujah. <clears throat> verse 4, Acts 1, 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, which was the baptism of what? Death. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, which is the baptism of life power, and the character of Christ. Therefore, when they, had heard, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said to them, is, not, is it not for you to know times or seasons? It is not for you to know times or seasons, which the Father has put in his own authority. In other words, he's saying, why are you asking about this now? There's something more important. But you shall receive what? You shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. That is the baptism of life, power, and the character of Christ. So we must maintain the baptism of death to maintain the baptism of life, power, and death. Amen? In Romans 14. Hallelujah. Romans 14, verse 16. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as what? Evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy 
in the Holy Spirit, which is God's love. It's what? Righteousness, peace, and joy are the emotions that is called God's love. So the word will also bring righteousness. The truth will bring what? Righteousness. It will bring peace. And it will bring joy. There is joy when you're free. There's peace when you're free. And there's the righteousness of Christ because of his character. It, but it's all in the Holy Spirit. The mentor. Amen. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Not anxiousness, anxiety, and fear. Why? Anxiousness, anxiety, and fear equals depression. It equals what? Depression. People are depressed because they're anxious. They have anxiety or they're fearful. What does it lead to? Depression. And they are, they're moving so fast. They want things done so fast. They don't get things the way they want. And they get what? Oppressed. Depressed. Because they can't wait. Psalms 19. The world is controlled by deception. The deception is emotion. It's a creator of emotional idols. People in the world are always in want. In verse 7, Psalm 19, verse 7. Let's speak it. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect doing what? Converting the soul. Wow. Converting the soul. That, that's why we must go through a conversion, conversion of the soul. The testament of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is what? Clean, enduring forever and the what judgments of the lord are true and righteous altogether do you understand when he's speaking about um the law the testimony the statutes the commandments the judgment these are all truth everything he's speaking about is truth the judgments of the lord is which is he judges with truth are true and righteous altogether more to be desired are they than gold yea than much fine gold Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them the servant is what? Warned. We're warned. We're actually warned about living out of the spirit or out of the soul or out of the flesh. We are warned. Because truth can only, only truth can be manifested by living out of the spirit. Truth will become compromised by living out of the soul. And it'll be nullified by living out of the flesh. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is what? Great reward. Who can understand his error? Cleanse me from the secret faults. Keep, me, keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. That's called assuming. Assuming. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? Blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my what? Redeemer. She talks about converting the soul. Again, these things cannot happen without a level of death. It's a lack of death. Presumptuous, presumptuous sin. It means it's a, a place of assuming caused by anxiousness, anxiety, lack of denying of yourself. Unless, again, unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. We may build the vision of the desire, but not his way. I'm going to share that again. God may give you a vision of something to do, 
Amen? But he's going to give you the tools and everything to build. He'll tell you when to build, how to build, where to build, what to do. If we don't do as his way, we build it in vain. So people are building visions out of the soul and not out of the spirit, and it's different. Why? Because it won't last. It won't stand. Anything that God's build, God builds is protected. Anything that he not build is not protected. There's a time for it. He gives us time to repent. <laughs> I can't emphasize enough about this emotional battle. And the storms that come are highly emotional. And they get people out of position, and they're after the body of Christ. Because they already have the world. But many of the believers are falling out of position because of emotion. Always looking at how they feel or what they don't feel. Luke 14. We're entering a holiday emotions. Oh, my God. Go to Walmart and see what's going on. <laughs> I mean, you know, they got, the, what is it, uh, Black Friday or whatever it is. People are, they stamp, stampede one another. Because of emotional desire. I want that. People spend all night in lines waiting to fulfill that desire. Think about it. I'm telling you, the world is controlled by deception, but it's controlled by emotion. The devil controls people by emotion. That's why some people thought Jesus was crude, rough. He was. He was rough. He didn't take no garbage. Call people hypocrites. Son, you're the children of the devil. He didn't, he didn't take no garbage from people. But he loved people. But his love was truth. He said it the way it is. This is the way it is. Because he was the manifested truth. Twenty five. Luke fourteen, twenty five. Now, great multitudes went with him, and he turned. Can you imagine all these people following him? And then all of a sudden he stops, and he turns around, and he says this. He says, if any of you comes to me and doesn't hate his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. In other words, he's telling everybody's following him. See, he knows about the emotional fight. He knows about his children that drift back into the soul and into the flesh and don't stay in the spirit. He knows. You know when you drift. I know when I drift. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. And my wife can't stand when I drift either. <laughs> no, I just shut up. I don't do nothing. I wait. I wait to get reconnected. I don't know why. Sometimes God just does it. Or sometimes that you just agreed with something, even in your thought. You don't even, sometimes you don't even realize it. Then you have to go through the self-deliverance process to get disconnected from all emotional idols of the world and get reconnected to the presence of God, to his presence and his glory, presence of power, Glory of character. Everyone say it with me. Presence of power, glory of character. Hallelujah. In verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower does not 
sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to what? Finish it. Do we do 27? Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That means you butter fight. Verse 29, lest after he has laid the foundation, he is not able to finish all who see it begin to mock him and saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Why aren't people able to finish? Can they get emotionally pushed out of place? How many of y'all know when you, if you get offended, that's an emotion? I've never seen a dead person get offended. In fact, I've never seen a dead person get angry. I haven't seen them do much. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <clears throat> or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? I would say he'd be emotionally upset right there, like shaking his boots. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. See, people still hold on to emotional things. Salt is good, but if it, the salt has lost its flavor, how should it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him what? Hear. The baptism of death is to, maintain, is to be maintained by the deny of self, selfish ambitions. You and I are to be hating evil, departing from evil, exposing evil, not petting it, not justifying it. Oh, that poor thing. I'm telling, I, I you heard the story already when my wife and I were casting out devils one day. And this woman had about 30-something of them. And this one demon came up and said to me, as I was casting it out, where will I go? I, I got emotionally, yeah, where will you? Wait a minute. It's like, yeah, where will you go? Dummy. Get rid of that thing. See, they love to play with you. <laughs> oh praise God the world is under control by the emotional idols they are imprisoned in the soul and flesh they twist the love of God as a right to do what I feel like doing losing the reality of the judgment and the wrath of God the Romans 1. I'll say that again. The world is under control by emotional idols, imprisoned in the soul and flesh. They're twisting the love of God as a right to do what they feel like. Losing the reality of God's judgment and wrath. Romans chapter 1 verse 18. The enemy loves holidays. Because <laughs> he knows he can emotionally really get to more and more people. In verse 18. For the wrath of God. Everyone say wrath of God. So is there a wrath of God? Yeah. But God is love. But is there a wrath of God? Is his wrath love? Yes. Is his love truth? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the what? They suppress the what? The truth that can heal, free, deliver, bless, Prosper, do whatever he wants. 
in unrighteousness. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, they twist it, they change it. They don't tell the truth themselves. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without what? Excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Why? Because they either left the walking in the spirit, or they never reached it anyways. They might have known about God, but really never walked with him. Or they walked away from him. They started in the spirit. Doesn't the word say, how could you start in the spirit and be fulfilled by the what? Flesh. Doesn't he call that bewitchment? Who has bewitched you? Professing to be wise, they became what? Fools. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to what? Uncleanness in the what? Lust. Now, lust of an emotion? Yes. I want you to grab hold of this. Because they were no longer living out of the spirit. They were living out of the soul. They were rejecting the truth to live out of the spirit. He let them have everything they wanted out of the soul. Go ahead, go by how you feel. Does everybody get it? Because see, there is a war of emotion. It's a battle of emotion. So he let them have what they wanted. He let them have what they were desiring. He called it lust. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who they exchange the what come on are you getting this they what they exchange the truth of god for the lie of emotion and worshiped and served the creature rather than the what creator who's blessed forever amen for this reason god gave them up to what vile passions is that emotion yeah for even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due, which is death. So look at this, what's happening. We, we're seeing the escalation of this. The escalation of sexual perversion. All of this was originated because of a desire, emotion. How many of y'all know demons get fed by emotion? Amen. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not what? Fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment, knowing the what? They know the judgment of God, but God is love. But so is his judgment. Remember, love is truth. It has a right to do whatever he wants. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of what? Death. Not only who those not only do the same, but also what? Approve of those who practice them. It's an emotional thing, isn't it? They suppress the truth. God allowed them to follow their emotional idols of desire because they exchanged the truth which has no emotion. For emotional lies of the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life that are false emotional fulfillments. Many Christians have fallen from the truth into an emotional soulish realm where God is just love. Forgetting 
He is judge, sentencer, and executor. Rome, uh, Proverbs 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And verse 16. I mean, when you really step back and start becoming more sensitive and discerning of everything, everything is about that emotion, the battle of emotion. We're in a war of emotion. Voices that release and improve, that promote emotion. And we're either living in the Spirit or not. Because if you're not living in the Spirit, living out of the Spirit, you're living in the soul. Do you ever see people when they're hurting, when, oh, everything's going to work out okay? Yeah, if you get in line with God, it's going to work out okay. But if you don't, it isn't going to. Why? Because that's the truth. It carries no emotion. But it will produce righteousness, peace, and joy. Which is God's love. Proverbs 6, 16. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, even seven are an abomination to him. A what? Proud look, a lying tongue, hates the shed of innocent blood. What you call that? Abortions. Amen. A heart that devises wicked plans. Those are selfish ambitions. Feet that are swift in running to what? Evil. Deception. A false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Seven things God hates. Wow. These are all influenced by what? Emotion. Lack of maintaining the baptism of death or a level of death. Second Timothy 3. So if God loves, can he hate? He just said he did. There's a lot of things he hates. But it is an expression of judgment to him. Because there are things that please him and displease him. Anything that displeases him, he hates it. Amen? Second Timothy 3. Hallelujah. He hates the wicked act. He hates to see abortion. These are things that he hates. Some of his things that he hates release judgment. Sometimes if some things he, especially with his children, if there's something his children are doing that he hates, he first tries conviction. <laughs> Amen. Tries to send someone across their path because he hates what kind of life they're living now. And he sends chastening. If they reject that, he sends judgment. That's where the word tells us that he causes a stumbling block to them. Why? Well, he's trying to rescue them from the what? Wrath. Because what you sow is what you reap. So we bring it on ourselves. What does the say, word say? I, went, I was afflicted when I what? Went astray. I, I, I can't emphasize enough, and I'm going to keep saying this. There's an area of living out of the Spirit that supersedes anything. Living out of the soul is dangerous. We've got to begin to discern these things because there are Christians who've been living out of the soul, even though they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and whatever. They're still living out of the soul and don't even realize it. 
Everything to them is God's love. Never a reality of God's judgment. Never a reality of God's wrath. Never a reality about truth that has no emotion. It goes forth and comes back fulfilled. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Let's speak it together. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will what? Come. For men, men will be what? Lovers. Lovers. Now this love is a worldly emotion. Because it's actually lust. Lovers of what? S selves. Themselves. Lovers of what? Money. They will be what? Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, whoa, slandering without self-control, brutal despisers of good, haters, traitors, <laughs> headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of what? God. Having a form of what? Godliness, but denying his power from such people do what? Do what? turn away. There will be lovers of lust, emotional idols of desire, no baptism of death, or have drifted from the spirit into the soul. They're led, you know, again, the baptism of death is always led by repentance. They declare their godliness by their deeds, and not the relationship and character of Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13. Oh, happy days. Baptism of death. That's why I was saying it's a good day to die. Every decision, there must be a death to self before it can be brought to life. So your decision and my decision should always be denying yourself and find out what is pleasing to him. First Corinthians 13, is everybody there? In verse 1, hallelujah. Let's speak it together, please. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Now, wait a minute. What's God's love? Peace, joy, and righteousness. Okay. Here it is, verse 4. Love does what? Suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. Is love truth. Yes. But whether there are prophecies, they will fall, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, does a child live out of the spirit or out of the soul? Soul. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is what? Love. This is an area where perception is vital. Because seeing out of the soul is different than seeing out of the spirit. 
Seeing out of the flesh is different than seeing out of the spirit. It's different. 1 John 2. And then one more scripture. First John chapter 2. In verse 15. Do not what? Do not what? Love the world. In other words, don't love according to the way of the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Now we know that it may be in the process of passing away, but it ain't gone. We're still in an emotional battle, and there are emotional storms that come. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. That anointing is not in the soul. It's not in the flesh, it's in the spirit. And I'm going to close it, Jude. Maintaining the baptism of death. It's the same thing as what he said. What is the the law of the spirit, it's deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. In verse 14, the book of Jude. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 14, Jude. It's right before Revelation. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to do what? To do what? Execute judgment. Ooh. Execute judgment on all to convict all who are ungodly among them of all of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, own desires and emotions. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own own ungodly lusts or what? Emotions. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having or being in the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. And on some, have compassion, making a distinction. But on others, say with what? Fear. Fear. Hopefully they'll get the fear of God. Amen? Pulling them out of the fire. Hating. Everyone say hating. Even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. 
We ask that you prepare us for this emotional storm and the seasons of emotional, even in incidences, accidents, things that happen in our life. Lord, that we not fall from the spirit back into the soul or into the flesh. That we don't react, but we respond according to the spirit. We accept your truth. We will not return void. We love your truth. We thank you for the truth. We thank you for the spirit of truth. We thank you for the love of truth. We thank you for the price that you paid for us to get to truth. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed.